there's a question that's been kind of bouncing around my head that I'd love to ask. It's sure. on this topic. Let's say you're in a relationship and you want to try something new in the bedroom. I'm super keen, let's say, but the partner isn't that keen. What if, I, what if one of the partners is like, let's try something, the other one's not. Maybe it would actually bring us together if we did do this and did try it. Is there any kind of argument there? How would you approach a situation like that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So one thing that comes to, to mind is, I'm going to kind of answer this maybe in a roundabout way, but there's a, there's a tool, there's a few different versions of it online. Basically, it's a yes, no, maybe kind of checklist of different intimate or sexual activities. Everything from holding hands to rimming, everything under the sun. And I think regardless of whether you're partnered or not, to go through and see how do I feel about these things and what are my absolute hard no's, what are the things that are fuck yeses, and then the things that are maybes. And then if you're partnered and wanting to explore sexuality and new activities with a partner, then looking at each other's lists could be cool, right? And seeing how things match up and then asking what would it look like for you to feel comfortable exploring that? What would make that feel safe? I, I think for the person who did want to do that thing, figuring out what's the need there, increased connection. Does that have to do with just exploring pleasure differently? Are there different ways of meeting that need? Are there ways without making a person feel like they have to cross their own boundary? Just exploring it and talking about it. That's what I would say. And I mean, some people's hard no's are never going to move. Some might soften over time as trust and intimacy build in a, in a relationship. And that's the thing. These things change, right? If I had done that list 10 years ago, it would look really, really different from how it does now. And I think that there are specific partners and specific ex experiences that change where there was a lot of trust when I, I'm so tempted to just delve into my own sexual experiences and I'm so not doing that on the, inter on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that is a boundary. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> would it take you to be comfortable doing that, Roxanne? <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, I guess just recognizing that we're all humans in progress, right? And that there's trust, if there's safety, then people's boundaries are likely to change. And also sometimes contract too. Maybe if someone is going through a period of dealing with mental health stuff, or if they have a trauma history, if they have sexual violence that's, that, as part of their personal history, there's likely to be periods where they feel more sexually withdrawn and sexually isolated from their partner. And that things they're usually totally down for might be off the table, but not so. That's what I would say.